So I'd like to invite uh, Noam Wagner, who will be presenting the talk on ultrasound and going into much more detail on how we do compressed beam forming um, in the subject. and the compressed testing framework which is uh, elaborated here today. And uh, this project is uh, partly supported by a marketing grant from Israel Ministry of Trade and uh, Industry. Before we dive to the ideas of uh, our work, I would like to give a short background about medical ultrasound uh, for those who are less familiar with it. So sonography uh, basically is ultrasound-based imaging technique which is quite widely used in medicine both for diagnostic and uh, therapeutic procedures. And it can be considered as remote sensing of the tissue using ultrasonic energy. And by the term ultrasonic energy, we refer to all sound waves which, which are in excess of the he uh, audible range, that is 50, uh, about 15 to 20 kilohertz. And the frequencies typically used in medical ultrasound are 2 to 18 megahertz, and that depends on the uh, application. Now, there are uh, several uh, modes of uh, ultrasound imaging. You may be familiar, for instance, with the Doppler mode, where we are trying to recover velocities of stuttering elements in the body, such as blood. Uh, in our case, we were uh, focusing on a very specific and common mode, which is known as B-mode, or brightness mode imaging, where we are exploiting the intensity of the reflected energy in order to image uh, uh, tissue structures in a planar cross-section, or uh, this, also, this method is also extended to three-dimensional volumes. And uh, an interesting question is how does the standard uh, conventional ultrasound system manage to recover the structure of the tissue from the reflected energy? And this is quite similar to, the, uh, to problems in radar or in sonar. And the idea is that by uh, controlling uh, the regime by which we transmit and detect the energy, uh, we can uh, find a very straightforward relationship between the energy which is reflected and the structure of the tissue. That is, if we transmit the signal, the transducer is transmitting the signal by a pulse wave excitation, meaning that it transmits a short pulses of energy, then we get a very straightforward relationship between the time in which we detect the echo and the, or the distance to the perturbation which caused this echo. So we get a radial localization in this way. Uh, we initially need to obtain the tangential or the angular localization, and this is done uh, by focusing the energy along a narrow beam, both in transmission and in the reception. Uh, so basically, the tissue structure is rendered from uh, individual scan lines where each time we transmit a single pulse of energy, we detect the reflected energy and map it versus time. And then this, uh, transmit, this uh, beam is being uh, steered in the plane or in the volume. Now, uh, in this case, uh, the focusing of the energy is done by mechanically shaping uh, the transducer as a curvature as part of the spherical shell with the, set, with the point, the center of curvature serving as the focal point. And uh, uh, in this illustration here, uh, the entire uh, steering is done mechanically, but modern ultrasound systems basically utilize the uh, concept of electronic array uh, uh, where the transducer is built as an array of piezoelectric elements, small elements, and each element transmits, uh, when it is excited electrically, a very wide acoustic beam. And this, trans this interfering beams form a typical beam pattern uh, by Huygens principle. And the whole shaping and steer of the beam in this case can be achieved by applying electronic delays to the elements which are transmitting and receiving. Uh, for instance, if you would like to focus uh, the beam to a certain point, we would apply a delay such that the, uh, the, the phases would be aligned at that point. And the, the, this concept can be done also during the reception by, by exploiting the acoustic reciprocity theory. That is, we can shape the gain pattern of the transducer, that is, uh, or conceptually uh, shape the beam from which we detect the energy. Now, using arrays, we have the ability to change during time the focal point. And here we can exploit the very straightforward relationship between the time of the detection and the distance of the perturbation. We, we can practically sweep the focal point through time in order to obtain a beam which is optimally focused at each depth. And this is more or less where sampling turns up. 
because this whole calculation, the calculation for obtaining this dynamic focusing is done uh, in the digital domain by the, uh, by the modern devices. And here we have the equation for this uh, dynamic focusing or beamforming. We, see, we practically see that the signals phi m, which are detected by each of the elements, are, uh, are uh, being, uh, 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 we apply time varying time delays to this signal, we are distorting these signals, and then we are averaging, averaging, averaging them. Alternatively, we can sum them with uh, some weight, uh, a process known as apodization. And although t here is a continuous variable, this is actually done after we sample the signals at high rates. Uh, and since such the systems are confined to uh, the classic Nyquist channel theorem, these are uh, rates of about 20 megahertz, which are twice the baseband bandwidth of the signals. And then the whole calculation is done digitally, uh, and eventually we obtain an enhancement of the SNR, the signal to noise ratio, and we can attenuate reflections which are originating off the main axis, which we are imaging. Now, 20 megahertz per L uh, does not, may not sound like a very high rate, but take into consideration that this is now done with a quite large number of elements. We have practically about 128 elements which are sampled at 20 megahertz, and as, uh, uh, with the recent development in medical treatment, the number of elements which are involved in the imaging typically, grow, typically grows, especially if we go to three-dimensional imaging where the array is a planar array of uh, of a two-dimensional array of elements. And uh, this, uh, consequently, um, uh, we, we have large amounts of data which needs to be sampled, transmitted, processed, and uh, this uh, implies eventually uh, the growing in machinery size and power consumption, and we hope that by reducing the amounts of data, we can reduce the number of com uh, computations in the transmission, and uh, eventually, obtain potential reduction of machinery size and power consumption. And uh, the goal is to do that, as close as possible to the front end of the system by reducing the sample rate of the analog signal. And apparently, the key to significant reduction in, in, in the sample rate lies beyond the classic uh, uh, sampling theory in the ideas which are discussed here today, uh, and the method is to integrate compressed sensing methodology with the traditional sampling approach in order to reduce the sampling rate, and this is the framework which we call sampling. And it was discussed here today, and we have continued the discussions later on. Uh, basically, the sampling approach means that we can reduce the sampling rate of the signal by exploiting some knowledge about the, st the structure of the signal. <coughs> and uh, what is the structure in the context of ultrasound? A previous work by Turel, Dar, and Friedman, uh, which is part of the uh, efforts in our group, showed that this ultrasound signal, which is detected by each of the individual elements, can be modeled as stream of pulses relatively small number of pulses, which correspond to strong uh, reflections from strong perturbations in the tissue. Now, additionally, we have what is known as speckles. Speckles are interfering wave patterns from microscopic perturbations in the tissue, but in the context of our work, we regard these speckles as noise, and we are focusing on detecting the strong perturbations, which rise from the strong echoes, uh, the strong echoes which rise from the strong perturbations along the path of the transmitted pulse. Now, having observed the structure of the signal, which comprises a relatively small number of pulses, we can characterize it by a relatively small number of parameters. Here, in this context, is the delays of the known shape pulse, which we are trying to evaluate, and the amplitudes which accompany this pulse. And for this case, we have sampling frameworks, exist existing frameworks, which can allow us to sample such signals from low rate samples. And I'll present them uh, soon. The basic approach of these schemes is that we can project the signal onto a subset of at least 2L, where L is the number of pulses, 2L Fourier coefficients. And once we do this projection, we can show that these coefficients relate to the unknown signal parameters, the amplitudes and the delays, in this form of some of complex sinusoids problem. And this is a problem which can be solved using mature techniques from the spectral analysis field. Or alternatively, alternatively, you can use uh, ideas from the compressed sensing, which I'll show immediately. So basically, we see that the whole problem, the sampling problem, narrows down to obtaining a relatively small number of the signals for year series coefficients. In this case, at least 2L, where L is the number of pulses. I've mentioned the compressed sensing approach for recovering uh, uh, the unknown delays and amplitudes from the uh, Fourier coefficients. The idea here is to assume 
that the anon delays are quantized with some delta S quantization state. And in this case, it can be shown that this vector, which contains our Fourier series coefficients, may be expressed as a sensing matrix multiplied by a very long vector, which is L sparse. The sensing matrix is actually k rows, which are taken from a larger n times n FFT matrix in this case. Uh, n is determined by the, the choice of the quantization steps with respect to the entire interval of the signal. Now, there are various folks who show what should be the lower bounds on the number of rows in A, or in our case, the number of samples to be taken, in order to obtain recovery with very high probability rate. And basically, what, should be, what is important to emphasize is that the number of samples is proportional to the number of pulses, but not to the bandwidth of the pulse. The pulse can be very narrow in time and very wide band, but the number of samples is proportional to the number of pulses, or the twice the number, twice this number is the number of degrees of freedom in the problem. Now, a very important insight which uh, regards this compressed sensing approach is that we can actually take any sample set or any set of Fourier series coefficients without needing the coefficients to be uh, structured. As opposed to the, comp uh, to the spectral analysis techniques where you are forced to take the coefficients in a very structured manner, for instance, we must take the samples such that they are uh, consequent for your series coefficients, using compressed sensing techniques, we can take the samples which, uh, in a manner that they are more distributed in the frequency domain. And uh, as we show in our work, uh, this uh, implies better rates of uh, uh, recovery. Uh, of course, it affects the complexity of the uh, sampling hardware, uh, but in our work in our uh, lab today, we, we seem to be able to achieve a very good trade-off between the complexity of the hardware and the recovery performance, and today, nowadays, we're working on a demo which will show that. Uh, here, there are two schemes which were developed, the first by uh, Turel Dar and the second by Dalyao and Dar, and these schemes actually uh, are concerned with solving our problem of obtaining a small number of coefficients from low rate samples of the signal. The left scheme is a single channel scheme utilizing a sample link kernel known as the uh, sum of sinks kernel. And the idea, or the uniqueness of the sum of sinks kernel, it is that it has a temporal, a, a compact temporal support. And this means that this scheme right here can be uh, easily extended to the case of infinite pulse streams where the pulse streams are not necessarily periodic. The second scheme is a multi-channel scheme where the signal is fed into several channels, each comprising modulator and integrator. And this is a scheme which, in fact, can be implemented basically using the existing hardware of the modulated wideband converter prototype developed here by the Shalina group. And uh, basically, using both these schemes, the outputs of the schemes are mixtures of the signals for your CS coefficients and we can recover the necessary coefficients from these mixtures by appropriate uh, 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 constraints on the mixing operator. So apparently, uh, apparently we have uh, the observation about the ultrasound signal being uh, comprising uh, a several number of pulses, or being a stream of pulses, and we have sampling schemes that are already existing which allow us to recover such signals. So you, we could go ahead and do the two-dimensional imaging. I mean, we could apply this sampling scheme to each of the individual elements. We can then take the low rate samples, recover the individual signals, and then go on with standard or some techniques, that is, beam forming, etc. Uh, we could even take this another step forward and say, okay, we are recovering the individual signals in the parametric domain. We have delays and amplitudes. So we could integrate this data in the parametric domain and transfer it to two-dimensional coordinates of the scattering elements. Well, in fact, if we go into practical uh, signals which are reflected from actual biological tissues, we, we see that these uh, techniques would not work very well. And the first reason is the low signal-to-noise noise ratio, which uh, characterizes uh, the signals detected in each of the elements, and this would typically uh, result in erroneous parameter extraction by the sampling schemes, the existing sampling schemes, which I presented before. Uh, the second idea, or the second problem is that uh, the second problem is that we obtain reflections from a relatively wide beam, because it is only after the beam forming that we can narrow the beam and obtain the angular localization. And here, uh, here is where our uh, proposed solution came, and the idea was to sample the beam-formed signal. 
Now, this is a very nice idea, of course. The only problem is that the beamform signal does not exist in analog domain. The beamform signal is generated is generated by the ultrasound devices from the samples of the analog signals. This is something I said in the beginning of the talk. And our idea to overcome this problem was, and this is where our first sampling scheme is presented, was to say, okay, let's take this beamform signal, which was generated digitally, but let us assume conceptually that somehow we could generate it in the analog domain, and then feed it into the one-dimensional sampling scheme which I presented in the beginning, for instance, the multi-channel scheme. And now, we have this uh, beamforming process which involves the distortion. And let us play a little bit with the blocks right here, and we can show, and this is something which we derive in our work, that we can uh, switch this distortion of the beamforming with equivalent distortion which is performed to the modulating kernels. So this way, we obtain a sampling scheme where the kernels are distorted, and this sampling scheme integrates inside it the process of the beamforming by distorting the shape of the kernels. And this is, for example, uh, uh, the sort of kernels which we will use for two different frequencies, for two different Fourier series coefficients. And it's a, a bit difficult to see. There are some, uh, there are many lines here, many traces here, which correspond to different elements in the array. Now, this is very nice, of course. The only problem is that these resulting kernels are quite complicated to implement in uh, hardware. And they vary or parameterize with both the, the sensor index and the line angle. And this is where Crane, uh, we presented our second sam uh, sampling scheme, or our second compressed beamforming scheme, where the idea was that we can, uh, it's a digital equivalent basically to the first scheme, where we sample the individual elements directly using the sampling link scheme, which I presented at the beginning of the talk but then apply some digital processing on the low rate samples, and it, it, it's important to emphasize that this processing is done on the low rate samples, in order to obtain resulting samples which are a very well, a very good approximation of the samples which were obtained by, uh, by the first scheme with the distorted kernels, which is presented at top. The cost is a slight uh, increase of the cardinality of the number of samples which need to be obtained from each of the elements, uh, but we've seen in our walks, in our experiments, that this is not a very big overhead in order to obtain quite nice uh, uh, recovery results. So, uh, we derived the schemes for recovering the parametric representation of the beamform signal, that is, the individual scan lines, and now the next task would be to recover the image, to reconstruct the two-dimensional image, and this is already quite a simple problem where we can employ standard ultrasound techniques. The main idea is that we have uh, the recovered delays and amplitudes. We have a known shape pulse which we can place at each such delay with the corresponding amplitude. And we then go on with procedures which are quite standard in ultrasound imaging. That is, we extract the envelope of the signal using Hilbert transform. We apply the logarithmic compression which allows us to show weak targets next to strong targets on the same plane. And we then go on and render the image from multiple such skylines. Typically, in this case uh, of the cardiac example, which is 60 degrees wide, wide we are using 120 such scan lines. Before I show some results, I would like to uh, summarize a little bit what we've seen so far. We have seen, uh, we managed to, mo to modify an existing sampling scheme so that it integrates the beamforming process inside and uh, the process of dynamic focusing, which I mentioned before. And we then derived a second simplified scheme, which is a digital equivalent, where the analog uh, signals are sampled directly using existing rather simple, more simple sampling approaches, and then we perform post-processing of the lower examples. And both these schemes recover the parametric representation of the beamforming scan lines in terms of delays and amplitudes, and then we can render these scan lines into an ultrasound image. And these are, to conclude, some results which were obtained using both our schemes. And the data was uh, obtained from uh, 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 GE's uh, 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 breadboard ultrasonic scanner, and uh, here at left, you can see the left column are two frames of cardiac imaging, two different frames, which uh, were generated using standard imaging techniques. The middle and the right columns were generated using our first scheme and our second scheme, which is aimed at approximating the first scheme. And you can see that the, the, the images 
uh, resemble one another very well. That is, the second scheme is a very good approximation of the first one, and both schemes manage to very well recover the strong perturbations which are visible in the standard image. And these images, in both cases, were obtained at almost uh, seven or at almost eightfold reduction in the sample rate, uh, which is quite uh, impressive. These are some additional references to our work. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have time for a quick question. <coughs> Safi, you're the uh, ultimate... Uh... <laughs> you think it would improve or, or perform better for high quality or for social quality machine? In other words, if I give you a top of the line ultrasound machine, and you say the factor of seven in second grade, versus give you a social machine, and there say the factor of seven, where will the difference in quality be in the grade of the family? My uh, intuition is that for the, uh, for the leading edge machines, we can improve the results, for instance, by, well, basically we, we, we have some ideas about what can, the information which can be done with these strong perturbations. For instance, we can use them, and it is done in uh, imaging, to track moving targets, and do it very quickly. So we can take, uh, we can exploit it in uh, state-of-the-art systems, for instance, in order to obtain a very uh, good rate, or, or a very good frame rate, for instance, in a large volume, and uh, image strong perturbation, which allow us to obtain information about the moving structures of the tissue such as in the heart. Okay, so let's thank the speaker once more.